The stained glass gets most of the attention at the church, but today, let's take a look at the less talked about garden level glass, the basement windows. Over the course of a few days, we decided to take on the challenge of stripping the windows, carefully removing the window panes. Two styles of textured glass make up the basement windows, maize and Florentine glass. Both of these patterns are made by the Mississippi Glass Company. The maze was one pattern of plate glass developed to improve daylight illumination, a prismatic design which diffuses and distributes the light. The brightness in a room, 30 feet or more in depth, can increase from 3 to 15 times as against ordinary window glass. It was patented in 1897. To gain access to fully strip the windows, we needed them to open. A lot of paint build up on the inside in the basement. The other pattern here is the Florentine. Florentine was one of the most popular Victorian patterns of the time, and one of the earliest styles of figured glass that was produced. It's labeled as, the efficient manner in which its attractive prismatic design diffuses light while obstructing the vision is a timeless design and makes it adaptable for many styles of architecture. It's patented in 1896. Starting with the small factory in St. Louis, Missouri, on the Mississippi River, from which the company's name was derived, the Mississippi Glass Company was born. George D. Humphreys moved from Connecticut to establish the company in 1873. George Humphrey's son, William, took over Mississippi Glass when he passed in 1877, with William being only 16. Pattern glass is made going through rollers that have designs on them. The pattern is transferred to one or both sides of the glass. Each manufacturer has their own unique rollers. To remove the glass, you need to remove the glazing. Some of it came off pretty easy, the rest of it that hadn't been as exposed to the elements was a bit tougher. Beneath the glazing are the glazing pins. Once they're out, the glass should come out. We decided to work one window at a time, it was the imminent threat of rain throughout this entire project. The linseed mixture we are applying is a homemade mix of an old-fashioned recipe. Three ingredients, beeswax and equal parts of boiled linseed oil and turpentine. First, melt the beeswax. I used a mason jar and a pot of hot water. Then add the linseed oil and turpentine. Put the mix in a sunny window for about a day and watch it change from a dark liquid to a golden paste. I set it back in the sun to soften prior to using it.
May's design, as far as we know, is currently not reproduced. We felt it was best to try and save the broken ones that were spared from complete destruction until we can find more. Turns out glazing is a bit of an art form, not just as easy as slapping it on the mutton and hoping for the best. I was supervised by some locals who informed me there was a guy around town that used to do it with his thumb, perfect, every time. Silly me using tools. Most of it worked out okay. I'll look into the guy with the thumb. President of the Mississippi Glass Company was Edward Walsh Jr., probably from the beginning, but definitely by 1877. He patented the maize and Florentine pattern and many others for the company. Mr. Walsh was born in St. Louis and graduated from St. Louis University, as well as Columbia College in New York, with a special training in metallurgy. What metallurgy is is a domain of material science and engineering and it studies the physical and chemical behavior of metallic elements. While he was still president of the company in 1901, Edward, when he was 52, along with his wife, son, and brother, rode the Knickerbocker Special World Fair train. While on the Big Four Railroad near Mattoon, Illinois, Edward suddenly dies on a particularly hot July day. The train he was on, number 201, the 244T, 
was one of a large fleet of this type and built in 1880. The work of Edward in his time was leading in the industry, and the success prompted other glass companies to form. Some believe cherubs were sent to earth to protect the pathway to the tree of life, and the lyre strings resonates the sounds of heaven and can represent harmony. In honor of the new season, along with autumn leaves, we have mums. The Victorian language of flowers says, mums represented friendship, cheerfulness, compassion, loyalty, and devotion. None of which are qualities possessed by the red fox squirrel here at the church. <laughs>